Chris. And I'm Amanda. And we're Family Magic Weekly, the Chip and Joanna of planning a Disney vacation. Oh, we should probably mute the TV. <laughs> or I'm Chip. And I'll I'm gladly be Joanna. Joanna. <laughs> I guess I couldn't really take that much further than that. <laughs> Today we begin Fast Pass Month with Family Magic Weekly. It's not really going to be a traditional month, but it's going to be a series of videos that we do um, on uh, making decisions regarding your fast passes for different parks. Um, today, we are going to start with Epcot, which can be a challenge as, a, as picking, up, uh, picking fast passes for uh, kids. You didn't mute the TV. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> What I think we should do is we should preface our first video by saying that <laughs> we didn't meet the dog. time you've been to Walt Disney World, the Fast Pass system is done quite a bit differently than the original system. So the way it used to be um, was it was a paper system and you would just walk up to the ride and push a button and you'd get a paper ticket that told you the time to return and then you went through the Fast Pass line. Um, the, the way the going back to the ride works is still the same, but now it's done more like advanced dining. It's done through the, um, the My Disney Experience app, um, which, you know, runs through your magic band, where um, you, you pick your, your fast passes for each park. Um, so just like dining, where you do it an X amount of days in advance, um, you have um, a very uh, advanced time frame to pick your fast passes, which has its pros and cons. Um, and we'll talk about some of the things that you should be aware of before you pick your fast passes. When picking your fast passes, um, you should be aware that you get three, um, and you they all need to be in one park. Um, so if you plan on park hopping, you're gonna want to pick your fast passes for probably the first park that you go to. Once you use up your free fast passes, then you can go to a. Um, station in the park. They have kiosks set up where you can then pick a fourth fast pass for whatever is available. Um, the, other, the other strategy perhaps is um, if you plan on getting an early start at one park, picking your fast passes for a park that you're going to later in the day. Because if you're there for the opening of many parks, um, such as Rope Drop at the Magic Kingdom or the Welcome Show at the Magic Kingdom, you're going to be able to get on a lot of rides before this park gets busy, so you might not want to burn your fast passes early in the day. Right. Um, but those are fast pass tips. Uh, what we're really looking to do today is focus on one park um, and s tell you how we would strategize um, getting fast passes for that park. And that park today is Epcot. So when you are um, when you're uh, picking your fast passes, your your three your three fast passes will go to a particular park. Um, your fourth fast pass, though, and this is a newer development, can actually be for any park. Um, provided there's fast passes left for that park. So if all three of your fast passes that you set up are for Epcot, which is, you know, the park that we're doing today, um, once you burn through those three fast passes, um, your fourth fast pass can be for any other park that you choose to visit that day. Epcot is one of the parks that has a tier system um, for their attractions. Um, certain attractions are in tier, a tier, which is tier one. Um, Tier one, you choose one. You can choose one fast pass. One out of your first three fast passes can be from tier one. The attractions in tier one are Soarin', Test Track, Frozen Ever After, and Illuminations. Um, tier two attractions 
are um, you choose two, uh, and so of the two, uh, the two, uh, you, the two that you can choose is from Turtle Talk with Crush, Spaceship Earth, um, the Character Spot, Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival, Journey into Imagination with Figment, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Mission Space, and Living with the Land. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and uh, to let you know which, which each of us would decide to be our Tier 1 selection for Fast Pass, and then we're going to each pick our two tier uh, selections and see how they compare, why we picked them, and why we think they'd be good ideas for, um, for a day at Epcot with kids. Okay. Okay? All right. Let me go first? No. <laughs> Okay, um, so my tier one is Frozen Ever After. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer uh, right now, just due to how insanely popular the attraction is and how insanely long those lines can get. People beeline to Norway, the Norway Pavilion, to get in line for that ride. Yeah. Um, the first, one of the first things you do the day your Fast Pass selection opens up, um, on the day you're going to want to go to Epcot, is you get that Frozen Ever After Fast Pass because the line is just going to be, um, most likely is going to be very long. Um, <laughs> like hours. Out, yeah. yeah. Um, if, uh, and that's, that's particularly if, you know, you do have kids, especially if you have uh, little girls that love Frozen. Or boys. Or boys. Um... You know, of the other attractions in there, Soren can get to be a pretty long line. I don't particularly like Soren. If I never ride that ride again, I'll be okay. I love Soren. Okay. You know that. Yeah. Um, and I, well, how about I jump in and piggyback off you? Okay. I also would say Frozen Ever After. We haven't been since it opened. Last time we were there, it was about to open. Mm -hmm. um, so we would fast pass that definitely because we've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, a, it's a good kid-friendly kid ride. Um... Soren, I like, but it's one of those things that if the line is okay, I'll go. If if not, I've seen it many times. Mm -hmm. um, Test Track is one that I wouldn't choose to get a fast pass for because we have small children. Mm -hmm. um, so we Damn. need to split regardless because mm -hmm. um, the kids aren't big enough to ride it. And Test Track has a single rider line. So, I wouldn't waste a fast pass because the single rider line goes pretty fast. It goes fast. pretty fast. You can, get, um, you can get through the attraction pretty quick. Because I believe, if memory serves me correct, um, test track, it's a three by three, right? Like, it's two rows of three. So, and most people are riding in twos or fours. So, mm -hmm. the, that single rider line goes really fast. Yeah, you can, um, get, you can get through it pretty quickly. Right. Um, Illuminations is a nice idea if you like the nighttime shows. The only issue that comes up with that is number one, you're you know of course you're burning your your tier one fast pass with it. And number two is you don't you don't get to that fast pass to the end of the night, so you're not going to get your fourth. You're most likely not going to get your fourth fast pass for the day. It's going to be the danger with choosing the the nighttime shows as any of your fast passes because you don't get the fourth until you finish with the third. And if your third is at the end of the day, you're gonna miss out on one. Right. You know what? If if it's not a big deal for you, if it's a if it's a um, if it's a slow season and the lines aren't bad for the attractions, um, it's probably not a bad idea because your day, you know, even when it's quiet, even when it's a even in a slow season, it can get pretty crowded at, at nighttime trying to fight, you know, and jockey for the best position for the fireworks or the show. We've um, never had a had an issue finding good spots for the nighttime shows. Mm -hmm. um, and when your concern is the comfort of the kids, it's really nice that they can just, it's not a, a ride so they can stay in the stroller. Yeah. Um, and the hesitation I have with fast passing nighttime shows is that a lot of times you're going to find that your child is going to burn and crash, like crash and burn way before mm -hmm. that nighttime show. After, especially if you're, you're an early riser and starter. Um, we ended up listening to illuminations from the resort a lot. Yeah, which was nice. And it's nice about having a Crescent Lake 
Uh, yeah. I'm sure. Which well, we've said. Yeah. One of the one of the advantages was illuminations. We never watched in Epcot with William, but we were able to go back to the room, put him in his pajamas, put him in a stroller, and go out to um, the boat dock and mm -hmm. watch it from there. And it was a, I thought it was a great scene. Yeah, you didn't give me some of the closer up stuff, the globe and all that. But, yeah. You know, it's still it's it's still it's still fireworks. It's still um, and it's a good option if your if your child is not a fan of okay. the noise of the fireworks. Yeah. So. All right. So, tier two. Um, what are your tier two selections? Okay. So my tier two selections are Mission Space. Even mm. though, yeah, I know. Um, I'll explain. And the character spot. Okay. Do you want to name your two before we go through and explain? Okay. Um, mine are Spaceship Earth. Okay. And Turtle Talk with Crush. Okay. All right. All right. So, the character spot we fast passed last time. So, there's a really large gift shop in Epcot, and right across from that is the character spot. It's an indoor um, meet and greet with like the main um you get mickey minnie and goofy i believe i believe that was the three that we met um it's good for little kids um it's also a good break from the heat because it's indoors um the lines can get pretty long because we know how our little ones like to meet the characters the character spot was kind of a we a last minute pick for us um but i definitely after doing it would do that again um mm -hmm. because it just kind of paid off for us not to have to wait the line was pretty long um and uh mission space because that's i'm actually surprised that mission space is not a tier one um the lines mm -hmm. get pretty long for it um and provided your kids are three foot eight, they can go on it. Yeah. That's the other thing. There are height requirements for some, and Mission yeah. Space is one with the height requirement. Yeah. yeah. Um, out of the tier two um, options, I feel like Mission Space is the one that seem, consistently seems to have the longest yeah. weight. So. Um, I agree. I, I enjoy Mission Space. I just gearing more towards kids. I don't know. Um, I know the 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 um, the more intense version is. Uh, is pretty intense, so I don't know how less. I don't know how the milder version is for kids. So I don't know if if I'm not. I don't know if it's kid appropriate. We um we got pretty used to doing rider, rider swaps. So like yeah. when I was thinking of fast passes, I wasn't particularly thinking of whether or not we would have a child with us other than with test track because we've done that one a lot. Right. As far as single rider goes. Right. Um. um so with that being said, um. We've had pretty good luck in the past with walking right on to living with the land, um, the seas, and yeah, don't waste it spaceship, on the seas. and spaceship Earth. Yeah. Um, but spaceship Earth is so touching, good. Like well, that's why I picked it. It's very unpredictable, and it's the centerpiece of the park. Um, you're on vacation with your family. Force your kids to learn something. Um, it's the nice, you know, pay attention, kids. Watch this. I think I will say type that. Of, type of attraction. And rather than have to worry about you kind of like, you know, you like you walk in. It's one of those things where you walk in Epcot, you see the time on there, and you're like, eh, should we wait and come back around? Or it's 25 minutes now. Is it going to get less than that? Don't worry about that. Just pick a time. Get on Spaceship Earth. Um, it's maybe pick, maybe pick it for a uh, fast pass for the middle of the day. It's a nice... It's a nice long ride, so you can get a nice cool. You know, it's a nice time to cool off. Cool yeah. Um, I will say I, that if you don't pick it as your fast pass, and you do see that it's a long line, just I would say walk past and go back because mm -hmm. we've walked past it and it's been an hour long wait, and then we've come back an hour later and it's a ten minute wait. No. So I wouldn't wait in the line mm -hmm. at, because I know that at some point it's probably going to be less. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about the characters because it is a you know it is a, a nice place to see, to to meet them. However, hey, you're doing if you're doing character breakfasts and all those things, there's plenty of other opportunities to meet characters other than Epcot. Um, <clears throat> Turtle, you know the seas with Nemo, not very crowded ever, as as we said. Turtle talk with Crush though, um, it's kind of limited space. Um, and uh, kids do love it. So 
Uh, there's not a lot in that tier that are particularly long lines consistently. Um, and some of those, uh, some of the rides are just like, you know, the Figment ride. Um, it's not the Figment ride that everybody, you know, once loved. Um, it's, it's, to me, I don't like it. But, um, but uh, Turtle Talk with Crush is something your kids are going to love. Um, and it's, it's unique. It's, there, there really isn't, there's not another attraction around like that one. I think um, so you kind of want to make, make time to go see that one. That's why, that's why I picked those two. I think Turtle Talk yeah. with Crush, it's going to be right in Williams Wheelhouse next time. Yeah. Go. So, so those are our, um, those are our selections for um, Epcot. That's what we would do. Um, what would you do? Um, what, what are your, you know, what are your thoughts? What do you select when you go to Epcot? Um, did we leave something out? Are we not factoring in something regarding another attraction that makes you think that it is a, uh, a must fast pass? Be sure to check out our YouTube channel. Um, check out our Twitter account. Uh, everything's Family Magic Weekly with the exception of the Twitter account. That's Family Magic WKLY due to the space constraints of Twitter. Um, we do have www.familymagicweekly.com which also features some supplemental information, you know, an occasional craft or um, things like that. We have Pinterest. Um, do we have Pinterest? Yes. Okay. Um, so be sure to check those things out. Uh, we are going to be doing um, our next videos on the other parks for Fast Passes. We're also going to be doing a video upcoming on uh, taking a last minute trip. And um, we have officially a short list for um, where we plan to set in our trip. That's right. We've been talking about it. We started planning. We're, we're in, that, in that time. So we'll be talking about that. So. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you uh, next week. Bye. Be careful.